Anxious kids. Some little ones are just a bit more anxious than others. Their things worry them a bit more and they can just get a little frustrated and it can make it very hard for them to settle to sleep or it can lead to your unsettled sleep. So in this video, I want to help you with four tips on how you can help ease the effects of an anxious little one. So my first tip for you is to let them share, let them unload, let them talk out anything that might be going on in their minds. So to, to um, make this happen, you can open up with questions, have some time where you're fully focused, fully present and engaged with them. You're not distracted with cooking or cleaning or on your phone or trying to juggle lots of things. You're just one-on-one -on -one right there in the moment and ask questions about their day or things that they're into, anything to probe to just get them to share and unload. It doesn't have to be all about worries and concerns. Maybe they will share some worries and concerns, but just to have that sharing opportunity, that unloading opportunity, that can really help to get rid of some of that busyness that's on the mind and that's causing them some angst. My second tip for you is to be aware of what their little eyes and ears are hearing and picking up on. It could be something on the news, on the radio, in the car, a conversation they heard between two adults at the side of the playground. It can be anywhere. We don't always realize the things they're picking up on. They seem like they're off busy playing, but they actually hear some key words coming between conversations between parents. And you're not concerned or worried or, or anything, but they just hear little things that can spark nerves. So having that awareness of what they're seeing and what they're hearing, the things they're taking in that could be creating some angst inside them. That awareness is where that begins. Once you can be aware of it, you can then protect them from it and make sure they're not exposed to hearing and seeing things that could cause concern for them. My third tip for you, is to have a calm time before the bedtime routine even begins. So this is before you go you know, to the bathroom and get ready for bed, before any of that happens, but actually in your daytime activity. So a lovely idea is perhaps after meal time that it's completely screen free time because screens can actually add to it, but screen free time Maybe you play a game together, maybe depending on your little one's age, making sure it's something that's age appropriate, but that's engaging and connective, but ideally quite calm, not too high energy. But that will help to cause a wind down and it will stimulate all the lovely sleep hormones that we want. And it will just again help, it opens the door for any sharing as well. And it just takes away that distraction and busyness that actually disturbs the brain even more, like screens and lights and hecticness. And my fourth tip for you is actually in the bedtime routine, make sure you have calming steps that lead towards sleep. So you don't go from that fun or you know, craziness of the day into, okay, ready for bed, got ready, it's bed, night, night, then it's all a bit too hectic and, and fast. So take some time in that routine, whether it's a bath or a shower or just a wash, that they do that activity, that things are calm. Maybe they have a little massage. Maybe you put on some soothing music during that time. There are some lovely children's meditations now and things that really help to just just relax, relax your child. It could be that you have soothing tunes during bath time, how lovely. Or afterwards, once they're ready for bed, maybe you go through to the bedroom and you just read a nice, calm story to them. Children love being read to even when they're old enough to read for themselves. But just a nice, calm story, or it might be a song that works better for them. Like I said, massages and those sorts of things, some like that soft touch, just a little stroking, just something you ritually do in your routine that's intentionally there to calm and just relax your little one before they go to sleep. So four top tips for you there, how you can hopefully calm an anxious little one, but actively take steps and measures to try to release some of that pressure, reduce some of that angst inside them and help them to sleep much better. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.